courtesy of Matt. I still can't see. <laughs> this is my least favorite part. Hello, it's Wendy and this is can she DIY it? It is a series where I see if I can make something, I show you all the steps along the way, and then hopefully you can make it too. Today's challenge is one that I'm really excited about. I've been wanting to make a puffy parka for a long time, and I made a long list of the supplies that I needed to buy. Then I realized there was a much more sustainable and guaranteed insulated way to do it, and that is to use a second hand sleeping bag. So that kind of brought me to two challenges. One is I really wanted to see if I could make a puffy parka from a sleeping bag. And two, just on this like sustainability theme, I thought, what if I try to do the whole thing with a theme of like recycled, sustainable items? Yeah. If you watch till the end, let me know how you think I did. And also if any ideas come to you on future sustainability themed projects, let me know. Hello. This is what we're dealing with today. I took it out to take a look at it and then I didn't do a very good job putting it back in. I did my best to find a sleeping bag that I actually liked the color of because there's a lot of, uh, I don't know, like kind of off off tones. This one, I thought it was navy. It's a bit more teal than navy, um, courtesy of Matt M. Thank you, Matt M. And it has a cool stripe. I'm really hoping we can make good use of that, as well as the little mesh pocket. Who knows what's gonna happen to that guy. But let's open it up together and get Okay. Whoa. <gasps> Whoa. This is a pattern that I had traced previously from a winter parka that I owned. I used it in a how to make a clear raincoat tutorial. I'll put the link in the description if you want to see that. But basically in this one piece of paper, I have half of a front and half of a back. And here I folded the back half out of the way so that I can just trace the front half. I needed two symmetrical pieces of this. So I traced one with the stripe and then the other one without the stripe. This gap I left in the front was to help me have enough fabric to work with to cross over the flaps, but the rest of the pattern I already had traced it with enough seam allowance, so I just went ahead and cut exactly along the edge all the way around. I flipped over that front piece to cut out a symmetrical front piece, folded the bag in half to cut out a back piece, and then found another place to fold it so I could cut out two sleeves. I'm back, it is a new day, and I have cut out the pieces that I need for now, uh, the collar is a part that stresses me out a little, so I just leave that for later. But here is the back piece. I'll lay these out on the table for you. Hopefully, will look like this. <laughs> then I have two front pieces. They are symmetrical to each other, since your front is a symmetrical body part. And so this one is over here on my right side. And to reduce work, I utilized the zipper edge of the sleeping bag to be the edge that will be the zipper later. I, I can't literally preserve this exact zipper because it does end up getting cut off, but at the very least having this finished edge will make it easier to attach a different zipper. I have chosen to put that little accent stripe over here. Hope it all looks good in the end. And I've got my two sleeves. These are symmetrical to each other, but not necessarily symmetrical in of themselves because the front and back side of your arm are obviously different and move differently. I added a clip to the front side of it because that will help me to remember which one is my left arm with this clip in front and which one is my right arm with this clip in front. Starting with the back piece, I placed it right sides touching with the front pieces and we're gonna sew that together along the shoulders with a straight stitch. I'm feeling okay about the stripe placement and I purposefully made sure that this seam went into my armpit here and went into my armpit here. And that's just to make sure when it all closes up, everything lines up. Like it's gonna look unprofessional when you get this result. And uh, if I could show you the bottom. Oh, still can't see. <laughs> Can you see it now? Man, this thing is long. 
Can you see it now? This is such a long jacket. They line up front and back off to a good start. So now let's attach the sleeves. Because there are a lot more curves along the armholes, I did sew together all the layers with a straight stitch like so before putting it all together. So I have here the armhole, it's got one straight stitch to kind of hold all the layers in place. And I took the sleeve, folded it in half, and clipped it to the armhole down the two sides. So our entire side is still open. We're just gonna put it right sides together. Here's where I'm really happy that I used the edge of the sleeping bag as the end of my sleeve because now this is already hemmed using that brain. There's always a poncho stage when making a coat. This was probably the most exhausting stitch out of this whole entire parka process, but I did my best to wrestle it through the machine. I clip it together at the armpit, and that's just my way of making sure the armpit seam lines up. And then I sewed a straight stitch all the way down the sleeve, making sure the seams lined up front and back, and all the way down the side, making sure those seams line up front and back. Truth be told, I did not get this right the very first try. There was one part where I think one side of the armpit sucked in more fabric than the other, and so then the seams didn't line up perfectly. And then I realized that... Y'all know this is my least favorite part. See right And with great patience, I made it through this step. I wrestled it through the machine. I even broke a nail in the process. But then after I switched the nail, everything went so much smoother. So maybe I was just due for a, a nail change anyways. But let's flip these guys inside out. Uh-oh, okay. I didn't capture all of the blue uh, fabric here. So I'm gonna have to fix that. Whoa, oh, I can't do this for long. I'm gonna get really hot. Here's how we're going so far. I'm gonna fix this little guy. And then next up, the collar. Before we get to the collar, actually, I realized that those zippers along the front needed to be totally removed. So I went ahead and did my world's most favorite activity, not seam ripping. Just working my way, left side, right side, and here's the finished zippers and all that extra threads that came out of it. To the collar! At first I was not quite sure how tall this needed to be, so I just cut off a whole panel that included a stitch, and that way the whole filling and everything wouldn't run away on me. It was just going to be a bit easier to manage. Next, I did pin this right sides together to the entire neck hole and sewed all the way around with a straight stitch. The piece that I cut actually was not even long enough to completely cover the neck hole. I was not quite sure what I was going to do about this spare flap, but my first goal was just to sew it together and see how it looked. What belongs here is a shot where I showed you how bad it looked at this step. It was way too tall, so it was floppy, and it didn't look like it matched up right in the front. So I did take it all apart, and the next thing I did was shorten the neck hole a little bit by taking in some fabric at the shoulders. I also took out my cutting mat and acrylic ruler to help me shorten this entire collar down to size. It's way too tall right now. Knowing it was not long enough to go around the entire neck hole, I also made sure I undid all these zipper stitches at the edge so that I could move the filling to go as deep into the corner as possible. Then I zhuzhed the filling a little bit more and sealed it all off with a straight stitch so that I wouldn't have to worry about all these layers separating while I'm attaching it to the parka. And one more thing, I did seal off the entire neck hole with a straight stitch because I didn't want these layers to run away on me. Finally, that brings us to attaching the collar to the parka. I decided to attach it so that it had a symmetrical amount of gap on both sides wasn't really sure how this was going to turn out in the end, 
but I just knew it would be better than what I had tried previously. Now it is a crime to make a winter coat that does not have pockets, so don't worry, I did not forget. I wanted to see if I could salvage this mesh zippered pocket that came with a sleeping bag, why not? And then I also cut out two more large rectangular panels from the remaining sleeping bag fabric. These just have to be big enough to comfortably fit your entire hand with room for seam allowance. I folded these right sides touching and sewed it along the bottom a little ways up the side and then also sealed off the top. That opening that's left over is where the hand is gonna go in the pocket. Looking at the side of the parka, I undid some of the stitching that was about a foot or so below the armpit and just did enough so that I could get the pocket to fit in this opening. Flipping the pocket to be right sides facing out, I slipped it into this gap and then attached it to the edge of the parka. I did this by putting clips along the entire opening and then sewing it all in place with a straight stitch. Once that's done, I can pull the pocket to be back on the inside of the jacket and then just at the top and the bottom of the pocket, I did a little bit of stitching to reinforce the side so that there's a clear end and beginning to the side of the parka before the pocket hole. So I mentioned near the beginning that I did break one needle I actually broke three needles in the process of making this parka, so if you're gonna do this, make sure you have strong needles to begin with. And I thought I'd do a really quick demonstration of how I swapped the needles since I got plenty of practice from making this parka. The first thing I do is make sure that there's something flat covering the bottom plate, and it's because if you accidentally drop the needle, it will bounce off of it, but if there's nothing there, it's gonna fall into the machine which is another huge headache. Then I slide the needle in, tighten it in place, remove the bottom plate, and we're ready to go. It's not that hard. Check it out, here is the finished pocket. We'll flip it over and it's nice and invisible. It's just hidden into the side and was really easy. Now the inside of the jacket is looking pretty messy with all this fluff and everything sticking out. So I'm gonna show you how I finished off to make it look a little bit more professional on the inside. The first step that I did was I cut out all the excess fluff from every single seam. I just went in there with a pair of scissors and tried to clean it all off. Next, I took this grow grain ribbon. It's nice and wide, it was a maroon shade to match the maroon accent on the parka and we're gonna use this to hide away all the seams. I fold in a small edge of the ribbon and then seal that with a straight stitch so that the raw edges are hidden away. Then I folded that over all of the seams and sewed through the entire layer so that it's basically wrapping up all the excess seams like a taco. I ended up adding this feature to all of the raw edges on the inside of the parka except for the arm hole because it was a little tricky to navigate around that in the sewing machine and it was especially important to add along the entire collar since that's pretty visible whenever you pop open the jacket and that front opening of the collar that was completely raw. Get yourself a zipper that you love. I thought a plain zipper would make this look more sleeping bag like so I did go with an accent zipper. Look at this yellow satin. It is so nice. It's double zip so it can open from the top and from the bottom. It slides real smooth. These are all the things that I look for in a good zipper. I wanted a little bit of the zipper to show at the top but for the rest to be completely hidden in the flap of the coat and so I pinned it to the coat with the teeth starting at the very top and just going all the way down as far as it could go. I sewed that to the parka with a straight stitch using a yellow thread that would help it blend in. After that, I unzipped the whole thing, flipped it open, and then pinned the other half of the zipper to the other half of the jacket, just trying to make sure that top and bottom lined up so that I didn't create any weird irregularities along the parka. This stitch will be visible from the outside, so I made sure that the bobbin or bottom thread was black and that way would not look out of place on the front. And then for the top thread, I used yellow so that would blend in with the zipper. These extra pieces of zipper along the top did not look very professional, so my plan to tuck them away was that I got in with a seam ripper and opened up that top seam just enough so that I could squeeze the zipper into that flap and then hand sew it shut. It's all nice and flush now and totally hidden away. I think this was a really good choice. And lastly, I did not forget about that zippered mesh bag. This is definitely a prime 
place to keep valuables on the inside of the parka. I wrapped the two sides and the bottom edge of the zippered bag with the maroon ribbon and then I sewed it to the inside of the jacket just by pinching a little bit of the plaid fabric so that this seam would not show on the outside. Okay, I'm about to show how it all looked in the end. I'm so excited, but I wanna give a quick sustainability report so that you can give accurate feedback from what I did. The zipper and the ribbon, those came from The Fabric Room, which is a store here in Toronto that, Toronto, that sells um, materials left over from a Canadian label that's no longer in business. So they're just existing as a store until all the amazing and beautiful inventory they have is done. It's pretty affordable, really pretty. I can't believe I only recently found out about it, but if you're in Toronto, please do check it out. The sleeping bag and the pants that I'm gonna be wearing with them are both secondhand. The pants I got through Buns, which you may have also noticed is the sponsor of this video. Thank you, Buns. It's an online trading app that's all about community, sustainability, self-expression. You post stuff that you have, you search for stuff other people have, and you can trade. I've been an avid Buns user for years. And when I told them that I had this idea for like a parka from a sleeping bag, they were like, can we please work on it together to co-support this message of sustainability? So if you're from Toronto, you're like, girl, we already know. But if you haven't heard of it yet, it's free. It's an online app that you download. You can see different items that are being traded in your neighborhood. When I was looking for these pants, I searched for the word pants. These are the pants that come up now, but what I did was I picked a pair of pants that I was interested in, I clicked make offer, and then I just messaged the person who has the pants and see what they wanna trade for it. More recently, things have gotten even more interesting here because they do have a digital currency called Bits, and I used that to shop local and I got a pair of socks to wear with this outfit. Here is the footage for how it looked. Thank you. It's the Canadian Polar Vortex. Pull up to your call to say. Hit you on your phone, won't you just pick up? I know you're on these roses, I will turn in. And it's late cause it's half past when Baby, can I come in? Ooh, yeah, yeah. One flip for two steps back If you're from Toronto and you want to come see what I have available for trade, you can look me up. My username is with Wendy. And if you want more photos of the parka, stay tuned. I'll put those on my Instagram, at with Wendy as well. And finally, if you make any of my DIYs, as usual, do use the hashtag made with Wendy so that I can find it. I really love going through all your photos and it just makes me so happy to see you all making stuff. Thank you for watching. Thanks for subscribing if you did. Check the links that I have in the description if you need more details and I will see you next time. Bye. No one else who knows like I do. Ah, every little thing that make you feel this good.